look, look at the current progress of Tina. I'll show you the uh, battery box real quick. So it's a, it's a mess right now, but we have three batteries uh, and the inverter charger that isn't hooked up over there yet. Yep, so uh, get some pass-throughs uh, and stuff for wires. Up on top we got one, two, three solar panels and the pass-through and the combination boxes up there. I have to route those and secure the wiring and all that still. Stairs are not done. That'll be one of the last things we do. So as you come in, there's an engine bay. We're gonna eventually build out this dashboard all in wood, but that's for future and we still have to finish this portion of the roof and the ceiling up here. But this is where we're storing all our tools for now and stuff. As you come in, there will be a refrigerator right here, a little uh, RV oven and a sink over here. Um, and that'll be up against the cushions here, the, the sofa. Where for lighting that runs off the solar. Green, blue, green, blue, red, yellow, white, dim them. This sofa, this will be where we put the dining room table that'll, that'll break down, fold up, and it'll store behind here. We have a top that we've stained that we'll seal today that'll go on top of this. So that's why this bench is built the way it is. It's a flip open bench so the, the lid flips open and there's storage underneath it. And then this back section is five inches, six inches deep so we can fold up and store our table behind it. This sofa we built differently. It doesn't have back storage and it has a tilted back for more comfort. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna build a face frame around here and uh, this will be pull-out drawers, three big pull-out drawers that come out uh, from there. So it looks like a cabinet right there. Tabletop here for access to my electrical under here and everything. And then the front section of it will have maybe like some pull-out drawer storage for like little kindling firewood and things like that. This wall will all be uh, like a metal plate back here and over here. And then there'll be a cubic uh, grizzly I'll post a link to those mounted right here on the wall and then it'll vent up through the roof here so um, yeah that'll be that this will be where the bathroom is uh, we have some nice privacy uh, glass uh, decal we put over that we put in a roof vent for moisture we're going to do tongue and groove cedar in the whole bathroom uh, all interior walls in the bathroom will be tongue and groove cedar. Uh, this used to be the wall, but we're actually going to move the wall back to about here. That'll be a vent for our composting toilet to help airflow across the composting uh, area. There'll be a fan that pulls air and, and blows air across the composting section out. Um, there will be a closet storage area here um, that has pull-out drawers in the bottom and like upper like cabinet door shelving up top. Boys, one, two, three bunk beds, all painted in chalk paint so they can draw all over their walls. Um, then we have one, two, and one, two bunk beds. These bunk beds have a flip open storage underneath them so that uh, this one's shallow and then the bottom one, then the bottom one has more space to it. Under here, I will build, be building a uh, cabinet, a pull out drawer cabinet that fits in this space right here. And then I'll be building a little like shoe storage area against the wheel well underneath this section of the bed on both sides so lots of storage the master bedroom uh, i have those closets i'll post a picture of them real quick but i have those closets in the in the garage uh, the polyurethane final coat went on last night so i'll install them tonight after work 
there's that and that. Then there'll be a shelf that goes in between them. And then we'll put in a removable wall up in here that we can put up for like a headboard when we're not using the back door. And we have the uh, kind of wall here. This will be all sealed with poly. The ceiling will be all sealed. You can see I already kind of sealed it with poly. You can see the color change there. Um, and of course we have another remote back here for bedroom lights. And see, this is where I put the uh, five inch tall, half inch uh, plywood cover over the, uh, uh, over the wiring uh, cavity. And then it creates a lip for the LED lights. Power in the back of the bus we have uh, regular car 12 volt outlet two USB ports and 110 volt 120 volt AC on both sides of the bed we also have one plug up here on the shelf the kids beds uh, the lower ones have two USB ports and a uh, car outlet and there will be another one installed on this bunk bed wall right here that's it you guys, that's the bus in a nutshell. I'm off to work. Uh, I'll show you the closets real quick that I made, just so you can see what we're gonna be installing later tonight. That I made, um, they've been polyed. They have a face frame on them. Um, and uh, they're only three-sided. Uh, they'll mount up against the wall, really tight. I've measured them and everything and I've used use pocket holes to secure them into the wall. Here's the uh, shelf that I'm gonna poly later today that Heather stained last night. Um, it's just a piece of uh, one by eight pine cut to shape. Uh, I rounded over the corners here and here on the exposed edges. Um, and then what I did so that it would sit in that cavity really nicely is I added a uh, pi uh, plywood <coughs> strip here and here you know all the way around so that when it sits in there it doesn't shift around and fall off because otherwise it would just be kind of floating on top of there. If you're wondering what kind of tools we use to get all this done, um, table saw is a must, skill saw is a must, router is pretty important, chop saw is extremely helpful. Um, I saw Ryobi just because it's what I can afford and I've had Ryobi so I just use them. Um, pocket hole jig from Craig. Always have a corded drill <laughs> so you can use it when your batteries die on your cordless stuff. Uh, plywood, lots and lots of plywood. Pine boards for, I'm using pine boards for facing just because uh, oak is expensive. Battery powered drill. This has come in really handy. Speed squares, uh, wood clamps, carpenter square, uh, jigsaw, nail guns. Uh, I have a 16 inch and an 18 inch nailer, a brad nailer and a finish nailer. Just a little Harbor Freight uh, Central Pneumatic 100 PSI, one third horsepower. I got this on sale at Harbor Freight. It's been powering my uh, nail guns very well. Now this right here has saved me a ton of time. Flexio, Wagner Flexio 890 sprayer uh, with boost power box or whatever. Anyways, it's got a turbine blower inside the box. It had two handheld sprayers, a small finish one and a larger one for big projects. Um, and this is what I've been using to spray my polyurethane on all of my projects. Uh, I can coat a whole project in like a minute. Um, like super quick, just, just spray it on. There's some videos of us doing that that you can go uh, look and see. Um, just using regular old polyurethane, fast drying, clear semi-gloss, oil-based uh, seal sealant. And for a couple projects, I used my little uh, Harbor Freight 90 amp flux welder that cost me like a hundred bucks. Maybe not even that, maybe like 90 bucks on sale or something like that. It's coming pretty oh, um, Yeah, that's pretty much the whole project. Um, for the most part, where we're at, I guess. I don't think I missed anything. What we really need right now is a small RV oven. Uh, those are about like five, six hundred dollars, I think, four or five, six hundred dollars. Or if we could find one out of like a 
trashed RV, that'd be fantastic if anybody knows anybody who has like a wrecked RV or a uh, scrap RV or something. And we really, really need air conditioning. Um, it's getting very hot and very humid and it's slowing us down. My attempt to turn window AC units into box uh, indoor units did not work out. Uh, very, very close. I just couldn't get the, con the condensation to drain correctly. Uh, too, there was too much suction in the unit to allow the water to drain down the hose. I would have to put a, a fairly large hose out the bottom and I just don't... Um, I think that I'm going to just give up and abandon that idea. And unfortunately, our windows are t too short for the uh, window AC units to fit out the window. So we're looking at like $300 on the cheap end, like four to $500 on the expensive end if we get one that has like a dual hose and can also be used for heat in the winter time, like supplemental heat. Uh, of course, none of that we could run when we're not on shore power or when the bus isn't actually driving because we can't power something like that just off our batteries. But, uh, you know, those are our needs right now. At this point, everything else we pretty much have covered uh, paycheck to paycheck. We're, we're f uh, able to fund the necessary plywood and, and things that we need to get all these little projects done. So, um, yeah, that's all we got. Uh, it's the bus life for us soon. If you have any questions on any portions of the project that I didn't cover in detail or that you saw that you wanted to know more about uh, or, or something like that, let me know and I'll try to like make a video with more details about it for you. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, have fun, y'all. God bless.